Greetings all you movie junkies, entertainment lovers, and welcome to another top 10 video. Today we're going to be switching up the format a little bit, and we're not going to be talking about movies. Instead, we're actually going to talk about horror anthology shows. So the way that I'm going to be organizing this list are by different anthology shows, why I like the format of each show. I'm going to highlight some of my personal favorite episodes and episodes that I think are worth checking out. So here we go. These are my top 10 horror anthology shows. So at number 10, uh, this one is actually an animated series. We have Tales from the Crypt Keeper, a kid-friendly animated spin-off of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, ran for two seasons, and then it was cancelled, and then it was randomly a couple years later brought back on another network with a totally different animation style. And I have to say, they really did actually push the boundary of what they could do on an animated show. Like, they really definitely pushed and really tried to make this as gory and as much like the live action Tales from the Crypt as much as possible while still keeping it kid friendly. And honestly, I actually saw this version uh, before I ever actually saw uh, Tales from the Crypt. Obviously introduced me to the character of the Crypt Keeper, who in this series is once again voiced by John Cassier. Even though it might be animated, it still does capture that tone. And I really, really like this one a lot. I, I think that is definitely kind of a bit of a hidden gem, kind of underrated. And I think it is legitimately good and I think it kind of stands on its own. So some of the worthy episodes to check out include Hunted, All the Gory Details, and Game Over. And then at number 9 we have another not strictly horror anthology series. We have Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories. Produced by Steven Spielberg, ran for about two seasons, 45 episodes, and this series is absolutely packed with loads and loads of big name stars, big name directors, you've got Toby Hooper in here, you've got Tom Holland in here, you've got Joe Dante in here, you've got Robert Zemeckis, and you've even got Steven Spielberg himself directing a couple episodes as well. And as I previously mentioned, this series is actually not strictly a horror anthology series, it's kind of just a mix of all kinds of different, uh, well, amazing stories with all these different really talented people working on. Uh, the series and amongst it you do have a lot of horror themed episodes with a lot of you know horror uh, Associated directors and actors being involved with it So I think there's enough horror in this series to kind of you know still put it on this list And I also think that the actual horror themed episodes to me are, are some of the best ones in the series as well but Part of the problem with amazing stories and the reason why it didn't last longer is despite you know it being produced by Steven Spielberg and having all these incredibly talented people attached to it is because this series more than any on this list is so 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 vast in its storytelling horror anthology series in general of course are going to be very fast uh, when it comes to its storytelling well i mean it's an anthology show so what's one episode it's going to be completely different from another episode but with amazing stories because it wasn't strictly horror it really 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 um was incredibly different from each episode and Honestly, so many of the episodes feel like they could have easily been uh, their own movies. In fact, one of the episodes that uh, actually did end up becoming a movie because they thought it had so much potential was Batteries Not Included. But it actually was originally supposed to be an episode of Amazing Stories that they later decided to turn into an actual proper feature film. But again, because the stories were so vast and so different from each other, because, you know, one would be a comedy, one would be more of a straight up horror, another would be kind of a war tale, another would do with time travel. Each episode was so different and so unique and would be so different from the last that I think it struggled to hold an audience. And I think that you're going to see with a lot of these other anthology shows that are on this list is that even though they might be anthology shows, they still have a general sort of tone or feel or style that each episode kind of honors and recreates despite it being a completely different story with completely different actors by completely different writers and directors. But Amazing Stories did not have that. All the episodes were incredibly different and unique from one another, almost too much in a way. And I think that's the reason why, unfortunately, it only lasted for about two seasons. And 
and could also be kind of looked at as kind of the problem with the series. Another thing that of course with horror anthology shows is that everybody is so mixed and different when it comes to you know what are the best episodes and this because the series is so vast I personally really like this series a lot I think that you know you've got just a lot of grand incredibly and talented people working on this series and so some of my uh, favorite episodes of the series include uh, You Gotta Believe Me, Dorothy and Ben and Mummy Daddy. At number 8 we have the original the Outer Limits, probably one of the most popular and most well-known uh, horror anthologies of all time, which of course does deal just as much with sort of, you know, science fiction than it does with horror elements as well. But when this series came on in the 60s, man did it scare people, and of course it had that absolutely iconic intro, you know, do not attempt to adjust the television, you know, everybody Everybody knows that, you know, through pop culture and, you know, The Simpsons and stuff like that. And so to not have the show on this list, to me, honestly, would be a crime. And some might be shocked that I didn't put this even higher, but it is, to me, for the most part, an incredibly well-made series. You cannot beat that intro. That intro will suck you in, even if the episode following is not, you know, the greatest episode in the world. That intro kind of sucks you in and pulls you in for the ride of every single episode of the series. It is overall just a really, really solid series. But to me, there's a lot of, you know, other horror anthologies that I personally would put above this. Some of the best episodes include Demon with a Glass Hand and The Galaxy Being. And now at number seven, we have Monsters. Yes, the unofficial spin-off of Tales from the Dark Side. Who had the same production company behind Tales from the Dark Side. This basically came out uh, the following year after the final season of Tales from the Dark Side. And the concept of Monsters, for those of you who haven't seen this, is that, as you can probably guess from the title, is that each episode has some kind of a monster. And this, to me, is both the best thing about the series and that makes it stand out, whilst also being, I think, this series' biggest weakness. For me, with a lot of the shows that are on this list, you know, the fact that they were so sort of low budget and so is kind of what gives them their charm to me. It's kind of the fact that it is kind of, you know, the, the, the low budget and sort of, you know, macabre quality-ness to it is what kind of makes the these shows kind of makes the appeal of these shows and so that definitely goes for the case with monsters but the problem with monsters is that because of the concept of the show because it's called monsters every episode you go into expecting to see some kind of a monster and that's kind of always what you're wondering is what is the monster going to be in this episode and unfortunately that i found when watching this series is that a lot of the times the monster in, in the episode won't even show up or there won't even be a hint that there's a monster until the last couple minutes. There's even some episodes of the series where there isn't actually a monster until maybe the last two minutes of the episode. So this to me again is kind of part of the problem is because you kind of you're waiting to see where is this where is the monster going to show up in the story and you're not actually enjoying the story on its own merits. But a lot of the times the show does actually live up to the name monsters. Honestly I would say most of the time it does live up to the name. For a low budget show they definitely got really really creative and there's so many different kinds of monsters and different kinds of stories reason it really really is a very very fun show and they definitely pushed the boundaries of what you could do on a tv show in that time and so there's actually quite a lot of blood and gore and you know violence and legitimately scary and dark moments that were very ahead of its time compared to a lot of the other shows not just not just regular shows but horror anthology shows that were on at that time as well so to me this is for the most part just a really really fun series and you know as a kid you know loving you know monster movies and stuff you know the whole concept of the show was you know brilliant to me like a whole show where each episode there's going to be like a different monster like you know sign me up and i think the best way to experience this series is to really honestly not think of the monsters title uh too much you know and i think it's important to not really go into the episode you know waiting to see a monster and just kind of let the episode kind of surprise you and where exactly the monster or said monsters are gonna show up some of my favorite episodes include the match game and mannequins of horror and at number 6, we have the previously mentioned Tales from the Dark Side. This was originally created by George Amaro, who of course brought us uh, one of the all-time great horror anthology movies in Creepshow. And Tales from the Dark Side was essentially supposed to be Creepshow the series originally. But there was basically some issues with the Creepshow name, they couldn't figure out how to get the Creepshow name for television. And George Amaro had actually already written uh, a bunch of uh, story ideas for the series, 
So instead of just abandoning the idea completely, they decide, we'll, we'll still do a horror anthology show, but it won't be called Creep Show. So they ended up going with the title of Tales from the Dark Side. I really do have a big soft spot for this one because this essentially of all the shows on this list was the first one that I saw. This was essentially my kind of introduction to proper horror anthology shows. And I have a lot of, a lot of fond memories of, you know, sneaking out of my bed at night and sneaking downstairs, you know, turning on the TV to, you know, catch, re of course, reruns of this series that was not alive during the original broadcast of the series when it was originally on. I used to think it was the greatest thing ever, and this show, much like Monsters, is it was a very, very low budget series. This show was so low budget that it's honestly part of the aesthetic and feel of this show. And because it was low budget and because they didn't have a lot of money to work with, the show kind of has a very distinct format to it, which is that it often only deals with maybe one or two characters in one or two locations. That's sort of the big giveaway that you're watching an episode of Tales from the Dark Side, is that that's what it deals with. Oftentimes, you know, again, dealing with, you know, very few locations. And they really did, even though they had such low budget to work with, they really did crank out some really fantastic episodes. I think the show kind of lost its way in the second half of the series in season three and four. It kind of went in the first season, it was kind of most of the episodes really, really great with some not so good episodes here and there. Unfortunately, in season three and four, it kind of changed to where it was most of the episodes were not so great, but there will be some really, really good episodes sprinkled throughout, which I think is probably part of the reason why it ultimately ended up getting canceled. And this is the thing about horror anthology shows is that it's it's honestly okay to have you know a bunch of bad episodes and as i previously mentioned pretty much all these shows have dead episodes you know and that's just the thing when you're doing horror anthologies is that each week you have to have a different kind of story a different kind of episode and you don't want to repeat yourself so you often you know more than other regular shows are really kind of uh testing the limits of kind of what kind of different stories you can do and so when you're doing such different stuff obviously it's not always going to work as much as you want it to but i think that it's all about sort of your batting average and i think you need the batting average uh for horror anthologies is to for most of the shows to be good in order for it to, you know, have a, you know, sort of long form success. And to me, that's kind of what happened with Tales from the Dark Side. It started having mostly good episodes and then kind of it started having mostly bad episodes later in the series. But again, even though it might be low budget, there were still a lot of really, really solid, a lot of which, as I previously mentioned, were written by George Mara himself. And so because you have George Mara's involvement, you have a lot of George Mara associates involved with the series. So you've got Michael Gornick directing directing a bunch of episodes. Michael Gornick, of course, was the director of photography in a lot of George Mara's films, and he went on to direct Creepshow 2. You've got John Harrison, who, of course, who composed a lot of the music for uh, George Mara's films, including Creepshow and Day of the Dead. And you've got the directorial debut of the legendary makeup effects artist Tom Savini. And his episodes in particular, I thought, were absolutely fantastic, including, honestly, my favorite episode, which is Halloween Candy. My favorite episodes of the series being The Devil's Advocate, Bigelow's Last Smoke, and of course, Halloween Candy. And number five, we have Masters of Horror. And Masters of Horror was essentially created by Mick Garris, who had done the Stand miniseries as well as the Shining miniseries. And so the appeal of Masters of Horror is that you have all of these iconic horror directors basically given creative control, not a lot of time, not a lot of money, not a lot of budget, but given creative control to basically do whatever the hell they wanted to do. And some of the directors of this series include Dario Argento, John Carpenter, Larry Cohen, Stuart Gordon, John Landis, Joe Dante, and you've even got Mick Garris himself directing a couple episodes as well. And there's even more directors as well, that's just to name a few. So you've got all of these, like, essentially, masters of horror, people who have, you know, worked on and directed, you know, a lot of significant horror films. Some directors like John Landis who haven't actually done a lot of uh, horror work, but are, are, you know, still great directors anyway. And that really is the draw of this series, that you, it is essentially just this incredible collection of all these great directors. And the episodes themselves are, it, this is definitely one of, one of the more, even though it wasn't 
a super big budget series compared to a lot of the movies that these directors have done, it still was a pretty big budget compared to a lot of the other horror anthology shows, particularly the shows that are on this list. And so the episodes themselves are quite long and often feel like they're actual movies. You you don't feel like you're watching a horror, horror anthology whenever you're watching any episode of the series. You feel like you're watching a movie by said director because they allowed the directors to again have full creative control therefore you've got all their different sort of styles There's no sort of clear sort of style or tone in the series the main sort of consistent thing being that you know it's very violent it's very gory because again it was full creative control and a lot of people are going to be mixed on sort of what episodes are sort of the good ones what episodes are the bad ones because again you've got so many different creative styles throughout this series so it really depends on kind of what it is that you personally are looking for but to me it is a fantastic series um, unfortunately it only lasted two seasons they only did about 26 episodes and there was kind of an unofficial first season in the form of fear itself which was also created by Mick Garris. It had a lot of, you know, the same directors and writers and stuff working on it, but it was on a network channel, which basically meant that they couldn't do, have it be as gory and they couldn't give full creative control there for it not being called Masters of Horror, it being called Fear Itself. And there was also another unofficial sort of spinoff called Masters of Science Fiction, which also only lasted for about one season. I will say this, that I think for most of these directors, unfortunately this is kind of partially kind of the the problem with this series is because you have so many of these iconic directors the expectation level is very very high to you know, produce some really really good quality stuff but the reality is is that unfortunately for I think most people would agree that for most of these directors this is not their best work a lot of the episodes are still, you know, really, really great. And, you know, I think that, you know, most of the episodes are really, really great in this series. And so because of that, I think that, you know, some people are, to be honest, I think a little bit too harsh on this series. But you honestly do have a lot of really, really great work from a lot of these directors as well. So I think it's a fantastic series. Some of my favorite episodes include Pick Me Up by Larry Cohen, Cigarette Burns by John Carpenter, Pro-Life by John Carpenter, and Family by John Landis. And then at number four, we have The Outer Limits. Yes, this is the revival of The Outer Limits. Uh, the original Outer Limits, funnily enough, actually didn't run for all that long. It only had about, I think, two seasons, maybe three seasons. But in those days, of course, the seasons were much longer than they are now. So there were still about, you know, I think 50 episodes of the series altogether. And so they eventually brought The Outer Limits back uh, in the late 90s on Showtime and it actually ended up running quite a bit longer than the original series and this series actually is one of the longest running all-time horror anthology shows uh, running at about seven seasons and I have to say this this is honestly to me again as you can probably tell because I put it higher up on the list where the revival version uh, is better than the original series version now obviously this series just wouldn't exist if it weren't for the original series which is again one of the big reasons why I felt it was very important to put the original series on the list because it is a great series but to me this series again it had a lot more sort of uh, I think of a distinct tone and feel to it that is a little bit more appealing to me personally it carries of course a lot of the same kind of story ideas and tones from the original series what's great about this series to me is that it's it focuses a lot on and a lot of the best episodes to me in this series are the ones that focus on experiments gone wrong that's sort of a generalized sort of theme in this series and there's also a lot of you know alien invasion type stories all kinds of different alien invasion type stories and stuff and it is an absolutely incredible collection of different kinds of stories i mean there were so many really really creative writers that were working on this show that really really took leaps and did so many kind of cool different things and again creatively there's just so many cool different ideas and concepts throughout this series but even though it might be you know based in science fiction concepts what i really like about the series is that they're all every episode is, is very much horror oriented it's like they take a science fiction idea and make it as horrific and scary as they possibly can and even though the show might be in you know, over 20 years old there's a lot of really freaky scary crazy stuff in here both in you know the effects and in you know the, just the concepts themselves of what they do with this series and there's a lot of really 
poor episodes in this series i won't lie but again because there's it ran for so many seasons a lot of fan phenomenal fantastic episodes as well and again i just really really love the overall tone and feel of this series and the kinds of stories that it that it tells that even the episodes that aren't so good i still enjoy because it's part of the overall tone and feel of it the, these are some of you know my personal favorite episodes of the series including a stitch in time birthright afterlife and mind over matter and at number three another uh, revival of an older series we have the new twilight zone or as people nowadays like to refer to it as the 80s twilight zone i'm um, talk about you know a revival series done right this series um was great and it was actually my personal introduction to the twilight zone i had actually never seen the original series before i had seen this specific version so i just thought this series was absolutely incredible i just fell in love with it i thought the stories were great and they of course have tried to bring back the twilight zone a couple more times um, after this but i think most people will agree that of all of the attempts to revive the twilight zone this was the best one this was the one that kind of got it the closest while still doing kind of its own thing but i think what's great about this series and why it's such a good revival is that it plays with a lot of the same kind of ideas that the original series had but you've also got unmade stories by rod serling that are being readapted by new writers for this series as well so you really got rod serling's dna on this thing which is really really great and i think is what kind of makes it you know was another thing that i think makes it so great not to mention the absolutely incredible list of guest stars that you have on this series so you've got john carradine you've got morgan freeman helen mirren bruce willis janet lee and the list goes just goes on 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 and i think again part of that is because of course it being the twilight zone name and it this being the first time that the twilight zone was brought back mostly brought with it a lot of you know sort of big name guest stars with it so it's a fantastic series i absolutely love it to me honestly it's almost just as good as that original show some of my favorite episodes of the show include nightcrawlers act break and a little peace and quiet and at number two here, we have Tales from the Crypt, which I know to a lot of people is going to be like their, their absolute favorite. Like a lot of people would say this is the all time great horror anthology series. And I'm very much, very much inclined to agree. And of course, it was based on the old EC horror comics from the 1950s. It was very much coming off the heels of Creepshow by George Romero. And with this being on HBO, they just, they just had full reign to just do whatever the hell they want when it, come to, it came to the stories. The fact that it does do such a great job of capturing the tone and feel of the old comic books while still keeping it, you know, live action and, you know, modern stuff. And I think this show is just fun, especially, I mean, the, I think one of the best parts, I mean, it is the Crypt Keeper. you know you've with you know john kersker's character of the crypt keeper introducing the episodes you know give, making you feel like a kid is so perfect for the style and tone and feel of the series and i think that format is what makes this show work so well is those introductions those that kind of way to bring you into the story and again, the, all the stories feel very much like you're reading a comic book. It, it has that kind of feel, that kind of look, that kind of aesthetic. And I think what's great about the show is even when there were kind of dud episodes, especially in you know that last season, sort of aspect of it that still made it work all throughout the series. The best part of the show were the twists. I think Tales from the Crypt, I think of all these shows, had some of the best sort of twist endings, you know, sort of, you know, it was sort of like the ultimate irony kind of twist endings that that made the episodes just just so much fun to watch so here are some of my all-time favorite episodes of tales from the crypt so we have what's cooking freeze a crowd cutting cards and four-sided triangle and at number one i think you could probably guess what this is especially from you know since i've mentioned it a couple times already we have the original rod serling's the twilight zone this series might not necessarily be classed as a horror show as much as it is a science fiction show but i feel like the stories in this are chilling and creepy enough to where i can get away of putting it at number one on this list because even to this day there are so many episodes of the twilight zone that still work just as well as they did when they first aired that it's somehow this show more than honestly almost any other show is still just as so much of it as just as effective now as it was when it first came out 
and it has some of the best sort of writing and just twists and in any horror anthology show ever and i think to put any other show at number one other than this one would be ridiculous because again this show was so 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 far ahead of its time but at the same time the episodes and stories of the show are just so timeless and well crafted and well made and much like tales from the crypt you know the format of it with rod serling you know the creator himself introducing the episodes and the way that he introduced introduce the episodes is again what makes it you know so great and even when there is an episode which was very very rare which might not be particularly that great it was still you know work within that format and was still you know enjoyable again there's just so 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 many episodes of the twilight zone that speak so many volumes that are just so interesting from a conceptual standpoint that are just so interesting to watch and again are just so timeless that you can just watch now and just be as amazed and thrilled and chilled by them as you were as you would have been when it first aired and so this one of all the all the rest of them i think it has to be a number one it's it's probably one of the great one of the greatest you know are arguably the greatest um series of all time and yeah it, it has to be and it's definitely one of my all-time favorite shows of all time so yeah it, the, it was very clear to me that this one was gonna have to be number one it has to be the original twilight zone and again they've tried to sort of remake the twilight zone but you know they've they've gone close a couple of times you know even rod Sterling himself tried to do a remake of the twilight zone in the form of night gallery but it's just this is one of those instances of you know lightning caught in a bottle it's a phenomenal series i can't say enough good things about it if you have never seen the twilight zone do yourself a favor of all the shows on this list watch the twilight zone because it's a, just an overall fantastic series and so it was very very difficult to try to you know put together uh, just a couple of my favorite episodes of the show because again there's just so many so many phenomenal episodes but these are just some of my personal favorite uh, episodes of the twilight zone so we have eye of the beholder when the sky was opened time enough at last nightmare at twenty thousand feet and my personal all-time favorite episode walking distance so there you go that was my list of my top 10 favorite horror anthology shows um as a horror fan i've always been a big fan of horror anthology shows but these are just you know my personal top 10 favorite ones and you know again i've always just loved the format of horror anthology shows you know the short form stories and uh yeah so there's many more that i could have said but again these are these are the ones that you know i personally think are the best that i would say you know recommend checking out if you're a horror fan but haven't seen a lot of horror anthologies well, for those of you who have seen many of these shows and, and you know be sure to jump in the list and tell me some of your favorite episodes and tell me you know some some other shows that that you think are really, really great that that were not on this list and uh yeah so until next time we're sure to consume as much entertainment as humanly possible and i will see you in the next video